Hello and welcome to live lunch break. <laughs> this is a live lunch break with Pastor, Associate Pastor Tony Gandula joining you today on a Thursday. Um, today is a really awesome day. It is a special day for us at my father's house because we pray. Hi Joyce, we pray at 12 o'clock noon. We uh, get together and we pray and we pray at 6.30 in the evening, which we're invited to come and check us out and come down to my father's house and pray with us. We pray a very unique way. We pray the Word of God. I'm not going to talk a lot about that today. Maybe that'll be for another subject, but um, we read it and we act it out, and it's really a, quite a different way of praying the Word of God. So more on that some other time, and maybe that'll be a topic for next week. But I'm really anxious and happy to get back into it. I'm getting to start to jump back into things right now. I've been a very, very busy morning, thus a messy hairdo. So I'm wearing my God's Army hat. Um, but I'm so happy to join you today and thank you for tuning in and saying hello. And I'll say hello back to you. I want to jump really quick into our series um, this week. It's about God's rest. Um, we've been focusing yesterday and we'll focus to today again back in Hebrews chapter 4. Um, quick, very quick recap. You're going to have to check out the other uh, episodes um, that happened this week to see where we're at. But if you want to go ahead and uh, give to the work of the ministry, check out um, our Facebook page. If you're watching on Facebook, hit the Shop Now button. Take you to the Donate Now at MFHLV.com. Hello, Regina. Praise God. So here we go. About God's rest. God's rest was before a great storm. Just like when God made the earth, the Bible says, and all that in creation, he rested. And because of his rest, things continued to function. Hi, Joe. And nothing could interrupt it. No great storm, a catastrophe could come along and interrupt it. And Jesus, so that's a little bit of the Old Testament into the New Testament, um, getting this verse in the story, the the Bible talks about how a great storm came upon the, um, the sea where Jesus had said a statement to his disciples. He said, we're going to the other side. So God has a plan. Um, and if you're a part of a fellowship, um, I know right now God has spoken to us at my father's house and he said, we're going to the other side. <laughs> and we've, we've voted on the other side um, this Sunday as far as the whole church agreeing, yes, we want to take this project on and go to the other side. So we're all saying yes. And the disciples got in the boat with Jesus and a great storm came up. But Jesus was in a great calm and they actually had to wake him up because of the calm he was in and he rebuked the elements. They, there was a storm going on in front of them and they were afraid of perishing. So there was a storm going, storm going on in their soul. Um, the doubt and the fear was there saying, do you even care? Do we perish that we're perishing you know that's how much a storm was going on on the inside as well as the outside but Jesus was in a great calm and that great calm rebuked the great storm so that was God's rest God's great calm and then yesterday we talked about there remains a rest to the people of God this is something for us God's great rest is for us I want to focus on verse 11 and this is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11 says this. Let us labor, therefore. So there's a work to be done. It's a great rest. But the apostle is saying here, let us labor to enter into that rest. What kind of labor is this? Well, it's a labor lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Lest any man um, finds himself, or woman finds himself, believing they're going to perish. <laughs> they're not able to enter into the rest. Jesus was into a great rest, and that great rest, um, they woke up Jesus, and he rebuked the wind and the waves, and he asked them why they didn't do it. There remained a rest for them, and he expected them to act upon it. We, when we get together, he is with us in the midst to bring his great presence, his great rest, and to arrest 
any storm. Verse 11, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Now, here the word unbelief is um, interpreted as disobedience or a hardness of heart. Let me explain that. Um, look at the hardness of the heart that hit the disciples. I mean, they're with their Savior. They're with the Lord Jesus Christ. They're with the man of miracles, and their heart became hard because of the storm. And they said this, don't you care? <laughs> you don't care? You're, don't you care that we're going to die? That's how hard, because of the attack, their hearts became. Um, the unbelief, you know, it's like, wow, you don't even care about us. And that was grabbing a, heart of, a hold of their heart. Now, last night, um, pastor ministered and... Um, that's a whole different thing going on, but it's an awesome Wednesday night series on the last days. But there was a brother present who has an awesome ministry of encouragement and exhorting um, one another. And a way you fight, the way you labor against a hard heart or the deceitfulness of, deceitfulness of sin where it just comes in and makes you think, yeah, God doesn't care about me or something like that is you exhort one another. The Bible says to encourage, this is a labor. The Bible says to encourage one another daily while it is called today. Now you can't encourage somebody else if you're not encouraged. You know what I'm saying? You're listening to a lunch break for encouragement. It's good news, but there's a labor to it. Um, that brother um, used to not be a very bold brother, but he's become a very bold brother in the love of God. And he's like a big bear right now. And he can just give you encouragement. It's a, it's, that's a gift. That's a gift of the Spirit. But he was just pouring that out yesterday, and, and it reminded me of this, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. And when this brother starts talking to you and encouraging you in the Lord, it's just like here's loads of the love of God being dumped on you. <laughs> and you can either receive it, or you can sit there and not believe it. You know what I'm saying? But the Bible is saying, and the apostle is saying, believe it. <laughs> Don't be disobedient. Don't let your heart become hard. Believe it. God is trying to encourage you. And another way you can labor to enter into that rest is Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Now, this is an awesome scripture, but let me just break down this one verse. By the grace of God and all glory to him. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That's a labor. When we get out of ourselves and we say, Lord, what do you have for me to do for you today? Or what is it that the church you're, you're involved with is, is doing? Or how can I be involved in a ministry to help somebody who's not doing as well as I am? Take my yoke upon you. That's what Jesus did. He took up a yoke, literally, for somebody else. It's a way of laboring to enter into his rest and learn of me. That takes obedience. Um, we're going to go ahead and listen to a lunch break. We're going to go ahead and let God shape our wills. Um, that's obedience. It's a labor. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. There, the Lord Jesus hits the very heart of the matter. The storm out in the lake, the storm that's happening in a person's life may be happening, but God has promised we're going to the other side. And we're agreeing we're going with you to the other side. A storm may come, but the real danger is when it gets into our souls. And it got into the disciples' souls where they said, don't you care that we perish? And that was the heart, the hearts became hard. But Jesus had said, we're going to the other side. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart. You'll find rest to the very heart of the matter, which is your souls. When the storm hits the soul, we're in trouble. The storm did not hit the soul of Jesus. <laughs> he was in a great calm. And that great calm overwhelmed the great storm. And he rebuked it. He rebuked the wind and the waves. And that's where we 
um, can join together, take a yoke with Jesus and with each other, and we can join together in prayer and see the great calm of God come. We're joining together, take my yoke upon you. It, it takes obedience. Um, it takes obedience to agree with somebody. You have to be on the same page with them. You have, might have to be in the same location. Um, you don't have to, but you're touching the same thing. You have to be in agreement. You have to be in obedience. But when you're together, one will send a thousand, two will send 10,000 to flee. There's power. He is there in the midst. And we find rest unto our souls when the storm is trying to rage on the inside of us. It didn't rage on the inside of Jesus. And we don't want it to rage inside of us either. Praise God. We want to believe. We want to say, no, no storm, wind. We're going to the other side. He cares. <laughs> and we're going to go with him. And if we have to, we're going to pray, praise God, and join together and know he's in our midst. And it's his great calmness that will rebuke that storm. But we will speak to the storm and we will speak to the unrest. Hallelujah. You know, there's danger to the human body from something as small as a cut if it is not taken care of. A cut is no big deal. But if you do nothing about it, you don't wash soap and water, uh, you don't cover it with an anointed ointment, you know, with an ointment rather, um, you don't bandage it, it could lead to infection, which could turn into a great storm. And that's a natural example that when we're dealing with something, we need to recognize an attack. We need to recognize something that's coming against God's word or his plan. And we need to address it. Um, we need to, if we have to, get together with a brother or a sister in Christ, um, someone you respect in the Lord, and <laughs> rebuke it. <laughs> Take authority over it. And not allow that thing to get on the inside. What's the remedy? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Obey, get together, do the thing that God has called you to do. Join together with other believers to do it. Because I'm meek and lowly in heart, and I care. Jesus is letting you know, I care. You're not going to perish, and you will find rest unto your souls. Let us labor to enter into that rest. It's a real labor, but it's a real rest that comes from God, and it remains, and it's there for us to enter into. So God's great calm upon a great storm. Uh, tomorrow we'll finish up and we'll read the last two, so you know ahead of time, the last two scriptures in Hebrew chapter 4. And really let you know it's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle. Um, and we have the authority in the spirit because of Jesus. God bless you. I hope you have an excellent day. Um, today is our day of prayer. Like I said, um, we're praying the word of God. I encourage you to come check us out at 6.30 this evening. If you're able to come at 12 in the afternoon, well, I keep forgetting that. It started already. So 6.30 in the evening, come check us out. You're also uh, welcome to come at 12 um, on Thursdays. We pray the word of God, and it is effectual. Praise God. And we join together in agreement, and God makes us joyful in his house of prayer. A kiss to the king. It's a special day. God bless you.